uh, I'm going to show you how to do electrochem. And I'm going to show you two ways to do that. And uh, you know, I hate doing this to you. There's a shortcut that will get you the answer. And that means that the question on the exam, there is one, I'm writing it right now. That question is just free points. Great. But I don't want you to use the shortcut method on the exam because I could train my cat to do that, right? It's just an algorithm. It's meaningless. What I want you to do is show me that you understand how it works. And that's what we're going to cover today. I'm, not, I'm just going to do like four examples and that'll be it. So we're going to end a little early today. Okay, so talk about what we're, we're doing here is electrochemical cell. Remember, this is a Daniel cell. We have, um, oh, 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 okay. So I meant to do, this will be a... Uh, standard hydrogen electrode. So remember that um, this uh, electrochem is basically a um, it's a subdivision of uh, our reactions, our, our, our N2 plus H2 reactions making ammonia. Uh, it's, a, it's a subdivision of that. Uh, it's just a little bit hard to see. Uh, but again, I'm going to review that. On the right side of the cell is the standard hydrogen electrode. Okay, this is our, as I used in the book, the word basis set. This is our reference. This is the same thing. This is defined as having no voltage. Not that it doesn't make sense because we can either have uh, H plus in solution, it's an acidic solution. I, I think you know that batteries contain acid, so I'll just assume that. Uh, H plus can get reduced to form H2 gas, or H2 gas, which I've drawn bubbling in here, uh, can get, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, H2, can, H2 gas can get oxidized to form H plus. It tends to be in the middle in terms of like what could happen in this electrochemical cell. It seems that hydrogen is kind of in, in between. It's not too hard to make it do one or the other. So it tends, so it's, it's defined as the standard. It also has some other positive quantity, uh, uh, qualities such as it's, uh, it's, it's an element in its standard state. I can bubble the hydrogen in at one, at one bar pressure, one bar pressure. Uh, the acid solution is one mole, one molar. So there, it's not hard to like set it up such that it's very standard-y, standard-ish. Uh, now on the other side is whatever. And in the case, now this is where I started having major malfunctions. Uh, let's put zinc. Okay, now this is, this is terribly, terribly, terribly important. So important I made some extra notes. Okay, if it's zinc, then you measure the voltage. Here's how you interpret this. And again, this, this part is, is absolutely crucial. This will be negative. So standard hydrogen electrode, which will call zero volts, is connected to a zinc electrode, which we'll call minus 0.076 volts, because that's what the freaking meter spits out. So we're attributing all the voltage push to zinc. Now, what that means is, compared to the standard hydrogen electrode, it means that zinc metal is being oxidized. Okay, that is what's happening. Now, real quick, before you think like, well, what else could happen? Hold on, just understand that if you get a negative, then what's happening is, is that the electrode's being oxidized and so it's, it's shedding, it's, it's uh, degrading. So this is not like electroplating. Uh, if that's happening, then this is and I'm not testing you on this, I believe this is the anode, and that means that this is where the electrons are, are coming from. Uh, if this was, uh, if, you, if you guys ever mess with electricity, and I think a lot of you do, it's the black wire, right? That's the dangerous wire. Okay, so with that said, let me give you the opposite. Let's do copper. And let's, um, now the reason that this is different is compared to the standard hydrogen electrode, which it's assumed to not really do anything. This guy is 0 0.34 volts, and I'll make I'll put a little positive. You know, normally, I just don't put anything for a positive, but really got to keep that straight. This is positive. I'll write positives there so you don't ever get confused. Okay, if this is the case, then the opposite reaction is occurring. That means copper in solution is um, being plated. Okay, 
Now again, um, uh, this is happening because it's being weighed against the hydrogen electrode. If you start, let's say, let's say that we add something else, if we had something else uh, instead of the hydrogen electrode, let's say we had zinc or something, this isn't necessarily true. The opposite could be happening. The same for zinc. Got a question. So when we're reading the voltmeter with regards to plus and minus, it will always be assuming that the electrons are being read moving left to right. No, 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 no. In this case, in this case, look, this is a consumer. This is a cons oh, sorry, yeah, I need to finish this. In this case, this is a consumer of electrons, right? Um, sorry, I just didn't finish. Good thing you pointed out that I wasn't. Right, in this case, electrons, instead of being products, are reactants. So, so in this case, the electrons are coming from over here. So let me, um, yeah, so if electrons are coming from here, what's happening is, is that the H gas is forming more acid. Right, I, I, producing I meant, electrons and, and coming up here to plane out the, the copper. I meant that like in terms of a circuit, like I can show whatever direction of flow I want if I switch the, the value, the, the sign on the voltage. Uh, well, I mean, if, in this particular case, if, when configured exactly this way, uh, I would register a positive voltage and it means electrons are going from right to left it was zinc if you going from left to right. And, and I, I remember you brought up which, how do you add the wires. Uh, I'm a little blanking out on that. But, um, but the important thing here, and this is crucial, positive means you are getting that, that this reaction is occurring. Negative, when I, when I drew the, um, um, for negative case, it's actually the, um, um, Oxidation. oxidation. This is a reduction of the other's oxidation. So uh, now what you do with that, uh, now instead of trying to memorize that, let me show you what you do with it. And it would help if my notes were, were clear. Okay, um, so let me, let me write down standard reduction potentials. Okay, this is what you, um, Okay, so in a Hess's law table, you have delta H of formation, delta G of formation, some other heat capacities, yada, yada, yada. This is the electrochemical equivalent. We're going to show reduction reactions every time. And so this is um, Cu2 plus, plus two electrons um, going to Cu. So, and then uh, you read out the voltage. And in this case, I, um, uh, um, I am, uh, where are my notes? Uh, this is uh, plus 0 0.34. Now again, this means that copper actually does want to be reduced, but only compared to zinc, to, to, high, to the hydrogen electrode. Okay, fine and good. So I can throw this up and say, hey, does this want to be uh, um, reduced compared to hydrogen? The answer is yes because it's positive. Let me put up the zinc uh, conjugate. Um, and the answer here is no. Uh, that's because the voltage is negative. Now, as an aside, remember that the Nernst equation is that the reaction delta G now remember that this is per mole. Voltage is technically is technically um, here we go. Okay, so uh, and I think I hope I did that from memory. By the way, let me uh, let me pray that that's right because God knows you've seen me. This is really my my weakest thing about. Um, uh, um, when, it, when it comes to all of physical chemistry, this is the weakest thing I'm at. Uh, question. Is that second equation positive? The zinc one? Um, no. No, it's negative. I thought when the electrons on the other side was negative. No, 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 no. This, no, this, this is right. This is, this is, yeah. Second equation to be No, no. No. So it doesn't matter it's if it's oxidized or reduction, the standard potential will always be negative points. It's the, it's the standard potential for reduction. Yeah, the, yeah, for, so for this reaction, this is this reaction has a negative voltage compared to the, to, the, to the thing. Okay. 
that, now here's what happens. Here's what happens. If you connect it to the hydrogen electrode, this won't occur. Now th this is my point. Now you look up here, if you get a negative voltage, you get a positive delta G. Does that occur? Is that spontaneous? No. What? Okay, now what do you do to a reaction to make it spontaneous? You decrease Gibbs energy. <laughs> Flip it! Don't you remember that? Flip the reaction. Products become reactants, reactants become products. You, put a, you, put, you pick up a negative sign in front of all the thermochemical data, including a, including a voltage. Okay, so again, again, let's, let's start with this guy. If connected to a standard hydrogen electrode, this is correct, just yes. But now the question is what happens, and this is where you're getting flummoxed. Because the voltage is positive, delta G is negative. Negative delta G is a really good thing. That means that this happens. It happens as written. This guy has a positive delta G. Therefore, it's not what happens. Now, why? So maybe you're wondering, like, why did I write it down? Because this is what you find in the data table. This is uh, this is our new Hess's law table. Instead of delta G's of formation, it's standard reduction potentials. Uh, they just decided. I mean, you know, what they could have done is written the written written uh, 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 reduction or oxidation or reduction or oxidation depending on what was positive or negative they just felt like well that has the benefit of showing you what happens compared to hydrogen what's bad about it is that it's it's flipping around like crazy they just decided to make all the things reduction whether they're spontaneous or not everything's a reduction so I mean you have to kind of pick there's going to be some difficulty in understanding this. What do you choose to be difficult? Understanding that the reaction is not necessarily spontaneous versus having extreme consistency in terms of what you're presenting. Choose one, right? This is what they chose. Okay, now that, hopefully we're okay on that. Now, hydrogen electrodes are rather inconvenient, and guess what? Hydrogen's kind of expensive. What about a battery where one side is copper and one side is zinc? That's what's going to be on the exam. That's what's on the homework. You now have to take this data, and now let's, let's get rid of uh, the hydrogen. Uh, what have I got? Copper? So now let's get rid of the hydrogen, and now we're going to have zinc. We're now going to have zinc, and we have to figure out what the heck happens. Now, as I, I, I've, I've already said, I have a way of cheating to figure this out. It works every time, but I don't want you to, don't put that down on the freaking tester, I'm counting all of it off. I'm going to count half of it off, I'm not that bad. But if I count half of it off, you're still failing, so I don't feel that bad about it. Uh, okay, so, I've given you something other than the standard hydrogen electrode, now what do you do? Okay, now on the homework, what have you, excuse me, what have you already asked me, um, what does it mean to have a dominant reaction? The answer is you have to figure out, when, when you have these two reactions, one of them is going to dominate the other. And the other one will conform to it. So in other words, if the desire for zinc to consume electrons is so great, then copper is forced to produce them. Now again, let me say that again. If if zinc's desire to consume electrons is so great, then copper is forced to produce them, and that, that means that would flip. Does that actually happen? All right, now, what we can do here is make another little entry here where we look at the delta G. This is delta G, what, what is this? This is delta G over the, the farad constant. We won't worry about plugging farads, which is like, 10, about 10 to the 5 or something, I, I forgot, anyway, is the number of coulombs uh, in a mole of electrons. It's, it's something like 10 to the 5. Um, yeah, anyway, and I, you know what, you don't actually need to ever put that into your calculator. Oh, calculator question, by the way, right? Okay, so how does that work? Um, let's see. This would be positive 1.52. And this is negative um, uh, 0.68. Okay, so what I can see is I can see several things going on. For one, this is bad. 
this is bad. This is this is uphill in energy. Uphill uphill in energy is bad. Okay, this is good. Um, this is good because it uh, it has a negative delta G. Now there's another bad thing. They both are producing electrons. They're both producing electrons. So as so I got I got two things that are bothering me. One's uphill, one's downhill. They're both producing electrons. You can't have both sides producing electrons. What do they do? Fight each other? Like the Battle of Helm's Deep? Oh wait, sorry, that's that's uh, Frodo. But anyway, okay. So what do you do? What do you do? One of them has to flip. One of them has to produce electrons. One of them has to conform. Since these are standard reduction potentials, they're often they're consuming electrons. They're not producing them. So what we got to do is we're, we're going to have to switch one of them. In, in this case, in this case, every case is different. And after this, I'm going to do example. I'm going to do like three or four more examples so that you, you get it. Show you every example you can run into. Right? That's the whole point. Now, what I can tell is there is no point even thinking about a negative voltage reaction. It's uphill. Throw that out. Get rid of it. Table it. And the way you do that is write the opposite. Uh, right the opposite. And then it has a fair chance of becoming that dominant reaction. And it's 1.52. Okay. Now, now I can decide what is my dominant reaction. And it is this one. It is this one, it is not this one. Okay, now what's happening here is that, all right, for one, this is more downhill than copper. So this overpowers the copper. But now we bring up a very interesting point. You don't see it here, but you're going to see it in another example. I'm going to ask you this. What do you think I should be looking at? Should I be looking at, in terms of deciding which has the most oomph, whichever one has the most oomph is the dominant reaction. We then get the other one to conform, and then we just do some calculator work and get three points. What do I look at? Do I look here or do I look here? What do you think? Here, who says here? This is delta G, but this is chemical potential. Which dominates? Potential. Wait, wait, no, hold on. Oh, yeah, potential. Meaning? Which one has the lowest value you can get to with? <laughs> it, 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 no, 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 hold on, hold on. Which one? Uh, now, now I'm looking. I'm looking either for the most negative or the most positive. Now, other than negative or positive, that's not important. One is delta G and one is chemical potential. One of those is more important than the other. Which is it? Chemical, chemical potential. That's right. You want to look at this. So this is what is very interesting about electrochemistry is that it shows that delta G is not in the driver's seat. Delta G doesn't decide whether a reaction occurs as chemical potential. Now the thing is, those have always been basically the same thing. And most of the examples I've given you were engineered to be a little bit easy. I've always done everything with one mole, or maybe two moles. So delta G per mole was delta G. They were the same thing. This time, you can actually make these conflict each other. I have some examples. I, I think I brought it with me. We can have a system with the most negative delta G does not have the greatest chemical potential of. So in other words, we can, so, so right now you're seeing, you're seeing no conflict. The most negative delta G has the greatest, has the most negative chemical potential. Don't forget, my, minus sign, right? So, um, um, so this guy wins, whether you look at delta G or whether you look at chemical potential, this one wins on both cases. But I'm warning you, probably what I'm going to do on the, the test is that there are cases where this guy can be, the, where, where this could be the most negative, but it's not winning in chemical potential. But chemical potential is what wins. Okay, so look out for that. Now you may ask, why am I, why am I writing down delta G at all? Delta G has the benefit of being additive. Delta G will allow me to calculate the voltage of the cell. Right, because it's like, Oh, okay, well, well, this is the dominant reaction, so the voltage is 0 0.076. Huh? What do you think? No, no, of course, this thing is going to do something, but what? But what is, 
you're going to convert, you're going to figure out what the dominant reaction is, get the other subordinate one to conform, get their delta Gs, add them, and convert them back to voltage. I know that was a mouthful, so let's do it. Now, now let's go back. Let's, let's just look at this as though I wrote it down for the first time. You've seen these two reactions, and you have their standard <coughs> potential. Number one, write it, get rid of the negative. You see negative, make it positive. Just, just wipe it out and write positive. Now you're in a position to decide on the winner. The winner will be the most positive. It may not be the most negative. That's what I'm telling you. It will not necessarily be the most negative delta G, but it will be the most positive voltage because that is negative chemi changing chemical potential. Ah, okay, that's a bit of a mouthful, but anyway. And now I'm still kind of talking about the cheating method, but, but that's true. Okay, I have established, I, now I, I, I took the negative guy, reversed it so it's positive, and I established that that guy's the winner. Now, it's producing electrons, and that means copper has to consume it. So now I write this down because I have to balance out the electrons. It doesn't make sense unless I balance out the electrons. And now what you do is you write the net reaction. Now, Cu2 plus plus zinc, <coughs> zinc metal goes to um, zinc ion plus copper, uh, copper metal. Okay, so this would be a way to play copper on the thing. So that's, that would be its utility. Um, I know a lot of engineers here, right? Okay, points. Seven out of ten. That's where you're at. Pretty good. Not failed. Let's get those last points. And the last points are to get the correct voltage and then we're done. And, and literally, literally, that's, I mean, I could, I could stop class now. Except I want to show you some harder ones. These oddly can get tricky. Okay. Now, how do you, now again, I'm going to just forget this. This guy, I don't want this guy confusing me. Now what I do is, is I need to get the voltage. So the, so the question, I give you this, you tell me what actually happens and you tell me what voltage. I've shown you half of it, so the other half. Now, now what I've done is, at this point you forget chemical potentials and you look at delta G. Energy's at, it's a Hess's Law question. You stack up the equations, you make them balance, you just add the delta Gs. This is delta G, it's just got weird units, that's all it is. Okay, so in this case, uh, I've got minus minus, so um, that ends up being uh, minus 220, uh, uh, 2.20. And I, again, I think that is technically, um, you know, technically these units are joules per coulomb, something like, I think that's the case. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, um, joule, coulomb, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, now what you do is you convert it back. And the way you do that is, um, sorry for my use of the board as usual, uh, blah, 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 minus, and again, I, you know, I, I really struggle with this. You saw me last Friday, I really have a nightmare. Um, a nightmarish time with this stuff, uh, and um, okay, and and this is a this is a jewel. Is this is a jewel. Yes. No, it's a volt. No, it's a volt farad. This is a volt. This is a jewel per coulomb, which is a volt farad. Mm -hmm. I think so. Oh, anyway, anyway. So let's now let's do this guy, and this is this is the voltage. Okay. So now, now I've got minus, okay, okay, this is where this is where you might screw up, minus, minus 2.20, minus, minus, uh, divided by the number of electrons, which you read off your balance, to, and, and, and you know what, yeah, this, this is um, a joule per coulomb is equal to a volt farad. So this is a volt farad. We're dividing by Faraday's constant. Now, now remember, I and don't worry about this, by the way. I'm not going to count off of this. This makes my head bleed. Um, but um, as I mentioned to you, these, these really aren't that hard. You just got to get some practice. That's why I threw so many at your homework. These are real easy questions, but you need practice. The Faraday's constant in, in the Nernst equation, actually, you never need to use it. Uh, so that's kind of cool. And this ends up being plus 1.10 volt. Full credit. There you go. Not too hard. Yeah, uh, question. I kind of lost you down here where you've got the 
the two, um, like why did we swap um, the zinc to, like zinc solid going to zinc uh -huh. ion plus two? Okay, so now, now again, you are going to be given, your, you've been asked to design a cell and you Google standard reduction potentials. This is where the, this is the basis of it. This is the data you have to work with. This is what you find online. So I give you what you find online. The problem is with this guy is that its voltage, its standard reduction potential is negative. And that means it has a positive delta G. That means don't even consider it. Wipe it out. Wipe it out, reverse it. So that it's on at least the same playing field. It, it's got to have a negative delta. This guy's positive. That means it's delta G is negative. You can't compare it to a positive delta G. It's automatically lost. Da, 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 da. All right, so you can't compare it to a positive delta G. It automatically lost that competition, but it can get flipped. It can get flipped, and, and it actually is a winner, and it, in fact, is the winner. This actually is the dominant reactant. I just had to reverse it. Once I reversed it, I actually, in this case, I, I was able to keep the other guy, the conforming reaction was still a consumer of electrons, this produced electrons, this consumed it. So I didn't have to do anything. And then I um, and then I simply converted the delta G's, added them, and then converted it back to voltage. A question. Uh, why can't we just add chemical potential and still So I said that there's a cheating method. Guess what the cheating method is? Add those two numbers together. That's right. And if you do that on the on the test, how many points do you get? Half. 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 No, you you want you want zero? No, no, no. No, he said, what if you said zero? I, I, I said negative. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Someone said negative. You get negative points for getting questions wrong. <laughs> they said negative was good. Okay, folks. Uh, here's your good. I know. Um, here's my point. Now, I was, about to, I was about to bring that up, uh, whoever, whoever mentioned that, I was about to bring that up. This, again, I could train my cat to do that. So, so he, again, here's the cheating method. Now, show me, show me that you understand what this is. Now, here's my point. I want you to understand that these voltages are delta Gs. I want you to know that delta Gs add, and then you just give me the voltage by the Merced equation. That says to me, you understand what the heck is happening. That you know the difference between delta G and chemical potential. And that you, for the first time, you really see that chemical potential is dominant. How it can actually overpower a, a, a delta G. Um, you check yourself. Come on, folks. Uh, so you check yourself by doing what, what you say. Just add them up. But, but I want you to show me that you know what you're doing. Eh? You're okay? Okay, example after example after example. And I guess we will end on time. Um, but uh, but that that's fine. It's um it's important that we that you know how to do this. Again, these are really easy, but you just need practice, 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 and you have the homework to practice, 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 practice. No. So so another thing is let me let me drop some more hints and some more cheat codes. Everything needs to be positive. The voltages need to be positive. The result will be positive. It's impossible for you to end up with a negative voltage. That means that you design the battery to run uphill. Things don't do that. Energy goes downhill, not uphill. Okay, so again, hint. Look for, you better have a positive voltage if you've got Okay, now let's do example problems because there's nothing, when it comes to this stuff, example problems are best. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm going to do a non-stoichiometric uh, a non-stoichiometric um, uh, deal here, and um, so a cerium. That cerium, by the way, cerium is um, used in some electronics applications. Okay, and so we got our old friend copper here. Okay, now. Um, and then we can do the, this guy, minus 1.61, minus 0 0.68. Uh, right, because that's 2. Okay. Now, again, what's the first step? Negative electrons. No. 
It's not what you do. Find the dominant reaction. Okay, now if you find the dominant reaction, if you have any negatives, negative voltages, flip them. Wipe out, wipe out what you got and flip it, but th that's not the case. So this is actually slightly easier. Uh, the hardness is that we actually have a different number of electrons. We're getting it. Okay, what's the dominant reaction? First one, right. This is the first one. This is the winner. Okay. That means that we have to get this, the bottom one to conform. Um, let, let, me for the, let me just for the hell of it, let me, let me just write over, write over just because I, I'm a little afraid we're going to run out of time. I'm actually a bit surprised by that. Um, but uh, what do I know? Um, okay. So I flipped it. Now, now again, it's important because I have identified the dominant reaction and I have to flip this guy to, um, to make it work. Now, here's a problem. Does it balance? No, it does not. It does not balance. Now, on your homework, I have you work one of these. And, and see, the thing is, there's two ways to do this. I could, and I'm going to do it this way. I could um, multiply everything by a half. I could multiply everything by a half, or I could, or I could double this one. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to do this one just because I have to pick one or the other. Okay, what do I do with this chemical potential? It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. It's a chemical potential. It doesn't scale with mass. It's already per mass, or, or per. It's actually per electron. So that doesn't change. This guy changes, right? So this is actually. Um, um, Oh, God, where am I at? Um, oh, oh my, I'm looking at my notes and it's one. It's one electron. Okay, so, um, so you, uh, so, so again, you, um, would it be positive? It would be positive, right, right, I'm looking at my notes. You're right, I'm looking at my notes, and so I'm, yeah. Yes, right, minus sign. Okay, okay, then you, you write this down. Uh, good for you um, uh, because because that's that's now now you now you are uh, at least getting a C. Hopefully you're going to do better. Okay, now what? Now what do I do? Uh, well, add the delta G. Add the delta G. Okay, in this case, in this case, this will be. Um, um, did I do that right? I did? Wow, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, so you add them together. Um, now, if you forget to, what to do from here, uh, you're now probably at 90, uh, 90 points. Let's go up here. Let's go up here. Okay, so I've got, uh, and this is in units of volts farads. Uh, minus, minus from the NERPS equation. Again, if you've done this right, you have to get a negative, a negative delta G. 27. Yeah, I know, I'm floundering on that, aren't I? Uh, this is a one electron, one electron. So the result is positive 1.27 volt. Ta-da! Um, let's see, do I have, I, just realized I didn't bring that example. I got one more. I, uh, I got one more. I guess I only have time for one more. Um, I hate to admit that I apparently I had another really good example, but apparently I haven't brought it with me. So I will do. A, oh, I have your homework up here. Um, okay, let me do one more. Let me do one more. This one is kind of an extreme example. <laughs> So uh, this one's kind of an extreme example, but I wanted to bring this up because this is related to alternative energy. This is related to alternative energy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, on your homework, on your homework, what's the last one? Yeah, what, what, what's, what's the what's the read-on show? Joel's experiment. Hey, I see what you did there. No, no, no. Sorry, number eight. Number eight. Uh, oh, Overall reaction potential for us to use. Give, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> let's just do, let's just do this one. This one's cool. This one, this let me let me not do the one. Let me not do the one that. Uh, yeah. Okay. This one is awesome. 
This is the one that will test you. Let me just do it. I mean, you know, I, I want you all to... I, I don't want to be grading any, any non-perfect homeworks. Uh, so you all need to um, do it the best you can and then work with your buddies to make it right. Uh, because that, that really is not, not just because it makes it easier for me to grade, because that's how you learn better. Okay, and now uh, then it, this ends up being minus 0 0.86, uh, 1 point, um, uh, is that right? Um, no, 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 it's not right because it's a single electron. Uh, and it would help if I could write. Okay, I love this question. That's why I wanted to do this and not the example I was about to do. Okay, so I've given you this. You write this. They're both positive. You can write this down. What's the dominant reaction? Notice that this has the biggest negative delta G. Second. But what about the negative delta G? You're right. You're right. So you see my point? See, this is why this is kind of cool. The negative delta G is not the winner. Greatest delta G, but not the greatest chemical potential. This is the winner. This is the winner. Now we have to conform to the answer. Okay, so this stays. We have to balance. Um, we have to balance it out. And I will... Um, Again, we're kind of out of time, so I am going to, I'm going to double this one. Um, is that right? Did I do that right? Yes. Okay, but yeah, I did kind of need your help. And then this is my 0 0.34. It's wrong, it's 1.04. It should be 0. 1.04. There you go. There you go. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I just I can't do things in my head. Okay, now, now again, uh, what you do is that, now you scale this different ways, and all that does is it makes it just difficult for me to, uh, to grade. That's, and that's kind of sucky. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, 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 no. No, that does not belong there. You see, this is tricky. See? Yeah, there we go, there we go. Okay, okay, full, full credit there. Okay, then this, um, uh, 3, 2, plus 4, um, uh, uh, okay, 32, is that right? <laughs> yeah, someone with the calculator? Uh, yeah, right here. Uh, yeah, you get it. There we go, okay. Now let's go here. <coughs> Negative uh, zero point volt farads. Now, now the tricky part is how many electrons? Two. Okay, and this ends up being point zero one. Eight. There we go. So, does it not matter which um, equation you multiply by the constant to balance out the electrons? That's the thing. So, I had you do that on the homework. I have you. I, I think I give you a hypothetical A plus B, okay. and I have you scale one or the other. And you'll always get the same voltage. Oh, uh, that was supposed to be the one that you conformed to the dominant reaction. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which one you scale because all I want is a, is a correct balance and a correct voltage. And the voltage is a chemical potential. Oh, oh, oh by the way, by the way, does that does that work? What, yeah. what is what is 0.522 minus 0.34? 0.182. I, I think it's 0.18. 0.182. <laughs> <laughs> One of you screwed me. Anyway, okay, point 0.182. Right, cheating methods. Okay.